Hey everyone, welcome to the video. My name is Murray. Uh, Zach King is pretty popular for his visual effects and trick videos. His channel has grown really big because of that and a lot of companies have asked to do advertisements in those uh, specific tricks and techniques. And so I'm going to show you how to do one of those today. I kind of need some money to show you how to do this. Um, maybe I can... Alright, I have... You know what? I have a trick here. It's, uh... Okay, uh, this is a little too much. I mean, I guess I can be going out. The more money, the better. Uh... I think I just destroyed my desk. Oh no, I should have thought that through. This is... Well, just to show you guys what this looks like now. My desk has coin dents in it. Um, Alright, so the first thing we have here is our base plate and I'm just going to go ahead and go grab my other footage where the coins are falling through the plastic bag that I have. And then I'm just going to time it up to where the coins just start coming out and then I'm going to drag it forward to where I think the coins should start falling out of the wallet. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take down the opacity. Uh, it doesn't really necessarily have to be an exact number but I'm just going to press G on the keyboard, grab my mask tool and just draw a mask around the wallet. I'm going to try and be as accurate as I can because uh, this is going to matter later on. And then I'm just going to go down and then out through the other side. And then I'm just going to connect the mask all the way on the other side here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click the stopwatch and I can actually go to the tracker and track forward. And sometimes it might follow the, the wallet. It depends on how good the scene is and a bunch of other factors. Sometimes it might track the wallet and sometimes it won't. In my case it didn't just because of how specific and maybe different the scene is. So I'm gonna have to do rotoscoping manually and uh, probably go ahead and pull my hair out by the end of it. One nice little trick is you can go down in time and you can adjust the mask to where it should be and then go halfway between the distance of your first keyframe and your last keyframe, make sure the mask is correct again. And then you can keep cutting that distance in half and keep adjusting the mask and the mask is going to automatically adjust between those keyframes to get to the next spot and sometimes it'll be accurate and sometimes it won't but it'll definitely cut your time in half it'll help you speed up your workflow and you won't have to mask every single frame i don't know if this was such a good idea And once your masking is finished, you can just check to see what it looks like. Next, I'm just going to toggle down the mask here. I'm going to just increase the opacity all the way up. And you can see it's cut me out. Don't worry, we'll fix that. I'm going to take the feather up to maybe 8. And at this point, I'll just go through and just make sure that the mask isn't cutting the wallet or anything else there. I don't have to worry about my body by the chair. I'll fix that in just a bit. So once we have our masking finished, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the background layer that I have of me and I'm just going to drag it to the top and then I'm going to press G on the keyboard, drag around with my mask and I'm just going to connect it again and what I need to watch out for is my chair moved a little bit so I'm going to have to fix that. I'm going to drag the mask out so that the whole chair is in the mask rather than out. That way I can avoid this strange handle of the chair being cut off halfway through. And one thing here, you can see the coins, it looks like it comes out through my wrist. So I'm just going to do some coin removal on the same layer that I have the coins. I'm just going to drag a mask around those coins. And then I'm going to go down to the mask here and I'm going to click add. I'm actually going to do subtract so it removes those coins. In fact, I'm going to go and do none for now just so I can see where they are. I'm going to turn down, I'm going to go to the mask path, I'm going to keyframe it. And I'm going to go down in time here and just make the mask follow them. It's probably going to be like two or three frames. So just make sure the mask is overlaying those coins, that way you won't see them. And it wouldn't matter once it hits the table because you're not going to know where they're coming from. Now the previous keyframe, I'm just going to add a keyframe to the opacity of the mask. 
Then I'm just gonna go down in time and take it to 100 and the first keyframe is going to be zero. That way you can't see the mask because otherwise it's gonna subtract other stuff as well. So it's only gonna be active for the duration of these coins falling. And then don't forget to subtract the mask. And then when I hit the last uh, position keyframe, I'm gonna take the opacity to 100 and then go down one keyframe and then take it down to zero. That way that mask is deactivated by the end of that movement. And then I'm just gonna repeat the process for the rest of the coins that looks like it's coming through my wrist. That way it looks a little more realistic. Okay, that looks all good. I'm just going to feather the mask, but also you can notice that the coins are being cut off because of the mask. So we're gonna have to fix that. That way it adds more realism and it just looks much better. Originally, I want to duplicate this layer. That way I can mask around each coin that goes around, but I figured that's gonna take so much time and there's a much quicker way to do it. So what I did is I went to Google, I went to images and I searched for a coin that was relatively shiny, but also a pretty average coin. That way, if I needed to change the colors of it, it could be very easy, but it's still a pretty bright coin. That way, any bright spots that the light reflects off the coin will still be shown. So I ended up going with this coin. So once I dragged it in, I just marked around the coin. That way I could remove the white there. And I added a feather and it just depends on your situation. But I went with two because that just worked for me. Then what I did is I added a curves effect to the layer and I just took down the brights a little bit because it was a little too bright as well as the darks just to add a bit more contrast because the scene had a lot of dark shadows in it. So I kind of wanted to mimic that and it worked out pretty well. What I did was I scaled it down. Don't be too worried about deforming the coin when you scale it down because the coins in the actual shot will be tilted a bit so they won't be exactly circular when they're facing the camera. So you can see if I align it next to the coins here, they're not perfectly round either because they're at an angle. Next thing I did as I went to a point in time where I saw the first coin kind of disappear behind that mask and I just repositioned the coin and I just do control shift D just to separate that layer just to make it appear where I, right here where I wanted to appear. Keyframe the position of that coin and I go down in maybe three or four frames and I just move it down out of frame. One nice little thing you can do is with these little tabs here, you can drag it to add an arc to the path of the coin. That way it looks like it's not just going straight. It actually kind of goes out with a bit of velocity and then its velocity kind of fades out and it starts to dip more towards the ground. One other important thing you need to make sure you do is activate the motion blur in the layer here and automatically it'll activate it for the composition in the top. That way it'll look more realistic and it won't just seem so rigid and disgusting. And so then it's pretty much the same process for the rest of the coins. I go to where I see a coin disappear or at least where it's most obvious. And I basically just duplicate this layer, drag that point in time to where I see that coin disappear. And I have obviously have to reposition that coin just a little bit to make sure it works out and continues on a similar path to where the coin would have been and then I basically had that like 20 of them going down and obviously there were more than 20 coins going behind that mask but you didn't notice right you didn't notice before so I got to cheat now what you can do is once you've had a few of them done just duplicate them and drag them further down the timeline that way you can save so much of your time you don't have to do all of them individually only a few of them and also don't forget you can change the curves to make them look a little different. So just add some variety to the coins. That way it doesn't look all the same. And some of them can be brighter than other coins and some of them can be darker. And so by the end of it, you've got like 20 layers or 21 layers of coins that you see and it fixes that issue. It looks like those coins are falling over through the edge here. So very basic techniques, but very powerful at the same time. They go a long way very useful. And then the last thing I did was when I was in my Premiere Pro project, I just grabbed the audio from those coins falling and I just matched it up with the original take because the original take was obviously blank with no coins. So that way it wasn't going to have any of that audio. So I just dragged in that audio from the coins falling, matched it up to where I thought it was going to start. And then we have that final result. You know what? I have a trick here. It's uh. Okay, uh, this is a little too much. I mean, I guess I can keep going on. The more money, the better. 
All right, so now that I've cleaned everything up, that's pretty much it. Quick and easy. Uh, my desk is completely ruined. I regret that so much. But, uh, whatever. The things I do for the videos. If you guys enjoyed, consider subscribing. Stick around for the future. Leave a like, it would really help the channel out. Uh, I have a lot of stuff on my store. Uh, there's a shop on mariaffilms.com slash shop. Link is in the description. Feel free to support the work that I do. I do this full time, so I appreciate any of your support. There's also a bunch of free stuff if you guys are interested in that. Uh, but yeah, until next time, remember, keep smiling, keep shooting. I wonder if you can fix this. Okay, so it's right there. Gotta make sure I don't move this chair. This chair's gotta be in the same position. Now the coins. Uh, I think I just destroyed my desk. I mean, if you're still watching, good for you. But the video is over, so you can you can leave if you want, or you can just keep watching me pick up coins. <laughs>